So hello and welcome to another podcast for National Insect Week 2014. I'm joined by Dr. Sarah Bainan today, who is the founder of Dr. Bainan's Bug Farm. She's an expert on dung beetles. So thank you very much for joining me today. That's a pleasure. So first of all, as I've said, you do have a particular passion for one group. Please tell me about these dung beetles. Yeah, so I guess it was when I was about 10 or 11 and I was at a show leading one of our prime Welsh black cattle and as you do as a small child wandering around and this big black beetle uh, just came and landed on the backside of the cow and then fell on the ground exposing its beautiful purple underside and I just thought what on earth is that? At that point I had no idea we had dung beetles in the UK and that they were so big and so charismatic, so beautiful and from that moment on I just became more and more interested. So what keeps you studying <laughs> dung beetles then? So from, from then on I realised that dung beetles are a really great indicator of the health of the environment. So you can design a study pretty much anywhere in the world, go out and study the dung beetles and they'll tell you a lot about how healthy that system is. And from my point of view I'm particularly interested in the health of farming systems. So we can, we can go out to a, a suite of farms and uh, say for example is organic farming better than conventional farming for dung beetles? You can go there, study the dung beetles, and come back with a, an answer fairly quickly. And then you can scale that up to other wildlife as well. And that, that's really exciting for me, working on insects generally, is that, that because they breed so quickly, they're such great indicators of what's going on in, in, the, in, you know, in, in the environment. And no other group really you can do that with. And it, it just, as a scientist, makes very exciting and very accessible and the fact that these really great beetles live in poo and you know without them the world would be covered in the stuff so in the UK if we didn't have dung beetles most people don't even realize we have dung beetles in the UK and we've got almost well, just over 40 species double the area of London would be covered in cow dung each year if it weren't for dung beetles to break it down so they're doing us a great service not only do they look cool they act fantastically fascinating um, but they're also really helping us and helping the planet so where in particular are dung beetles most important then are they are they in our farms as well as our cities as well as our forests and our grasslands where where do they occur so wherever there's dung particularly herbivore dung you'll find dung beetles to break it down so dung is pretty much a great nutrient rich food source so it makes sense that you've got a lot of species that actually depend on it and it's not just the dung beetles you've got other beetles flies wasps a whole range of dung dwelling insects that utilize that resource and those insects will be found in forest ecosystems um, and also farmland and as i say anywhere where there's dung but particularly from my research interests i'm looking at the ecosystem services those dung beetles provide for us as humans. So I particularly work on dung beetles in farmed ecosystems because farming at the end of the day is a business and farmers need to make money. So if we can prove to farmers that dung beetles are actually helping them make money, then we're on to a winner. So how exactly do dung beetles help farmers then? So dung beetles, I'll just explain a little bit about what they do. A dung beetle will sense, will smell dung with its antennae, will fly into a dung pat and crash land into it or next to it. And then they will bury within it. And we've got two main groups of dung beetles in the UK. We've got the tunnellers. And what the tunnellers do is they dig deep tunnels under or next to the dung pat. And then they'll pull dung down into the tunnel. Some can pull dung down as deep as two metres. If you think of a tiny beetle that's only a couple of centimetres long, digging a tunnel of two metres deep is such a feat. So anyways, you get the tunnellers, they dig a tunnel down and then they, they basically they have little sort of, I don't know, kind of little passageways going off that main tunnel and they fill those with dung and make what we call dung sausages <laughs> and they lay their eggs in said dung sausages the eggs then hatch into larvae awesome those those larvae are surrounded by moist warm nutrient rich food and by doing that by burying the dung these dung beetles are pulling the dung down and we've got the dwellers as our second group of dung beetles and they live within the dung pad feed within the dung pad lay their eggs in the dung or in the soil and so then those eggs if they're in the dung pat will hatch into larvae the larvae will keep eating the dung and the adult dung beetles eat the dung as well so by doing this the dung beetles are reducing pasture fouling getting dung down into the ground where the plant roots need it so it's free fertilizer from a farmer's point of view they are also aerating soil by tunneling in it 
they are increasing nutrient value of grass, they are reducing potentially livestock parasite spread, they're food for farmland birds and bats. So they have a whole range of services that you wouldn't really be aware of um, when you first start studying them. There's been a study done that rudimentarily values the provision, the ecosystem service provision by dung beetles in the US as saving the US cattle industry $380 million per year. Now that's probably a vast underestimation. So what we're doing at the moment, we've got a project that's actually looking at doing that in the UK. How much money are dung beetles saving the UK livestock industry? It's not just cattle, it's other livestock as well. And of course they're important for horse owners. Horse owners spend their life poo-picking paddocks to get rid of the dung. I personally am a horse owner. You can waste weeks of your year poo-picking, getting rid of that dung. If you can get the dung beetles to do it for you, fantastic. That's what we need to do. We need to get this information out there, therefore, to farmers and horse owners at how important dung beetles are. And one of the big issues is that we treat a lot of our livestock with chemicals to get rid of their internal parasites. Now, those chemicals will go pretty much unaltered straight through into the dung, where a lot of them continue to be toxic to invertebrates, therefore killing off the dung beetles. And that is one of the biggest factors that is causing widespread dung beetle declines across the world. How bad is this decline? Is, is it quite a serious problem? Yeah, well, to be honest, up until recently, we, don't re we haven't really known. Um, but some studies are showing that, yes, a large proportion of dung beetle species are now in serious decline. It, it's really, it's crazy to see, actually. I go out and spend a lot of time on farms, and you can see dung pats in some farms that have been there for over a year. And if I do dung beetle trapping, you don't catch any dung beetles. And, you know, there should be, at times of year, thousands of dung beetles in each dung pad, and you don't get any. I mean, when I was in, I do some work in Zambia, and when I was in Zambia, we worked on an intensive farm. I did dung beetle trapping there, and I also did dung beetle trapping in a, a surrounding wildlife conservation area. In the wildlife conservation area, there were hundreds of dung beetles in every trap. On the farm, I did not catch one dung beetle. So this is how serious the effect it's, can be. It's massively serious. I mean, you know, you're not only removing those animals, the beetles that are doing a huge job for you, you're also removing food for the wildlife on your farm. So you're affecting the birds that will come to your farm, the bats as well. And so you, you can wipe out wildlife on your farm by using these chemicals. Now it's not all chemicals. There are some chemicals that are much more toxic to the dung beetles than others. And there are also some dung beetles that are much more sensitive to the chemicals in other species. So what we're trying to do is get that information out there to, to speak to farmers and horse owners, to provide almost written guidelines with saying, please don't use X, Y, and Z chemical when dung beetles are active. And the less toxic ones, if you can just make sure that you keep your animals in, for example, when the majority of that chemical is being excreted in the dung. Therefore, you're not, you're not allowing the dung beetles to come in contact with the dung because it, it's excreted indoors. Um, and so I really think this is, this is one of the most, I guess, important parts of, of the work that I do. It's great to actually be able to translate research into practice and hopefully make a difference. This is where the bug farm comes in. So could you tell us a bit about Dr. Bain and bug farm? This is where the bug farm comes in. So I love research. I also love living in Pembrokeshire in West Wales. And I wanted to combine the two. And surprisingly, there's no big research institution in, well, in St. David's, which is really where I want to be in Pembrokeshire. So, so yeah, I started it myself. So, so it's a hundred acre farm. It's a beautiful farm situated by, um, it's basically between two areas of triple SI, of important wildlife habitat. And so we bought the farm and we're now setting it up as Dr. Bainan's bug farm. So first and foremost, as a research centre. Secondly, as an outreach and education centre. And then we're also, we've got innovation, so in innovative projects going on on site and we're starting an insect restaurant. So it's really exciting. We've already got our first researchers there. So what I want to do is to create a hub of activity, a hub of learning, and then to actually disseminate this information, get school groups in, college groups, university groups, make sure that all these scientists on site are giving talks, lectures, and infusing the new generation of ecologists. And I mean, it's not just dung beetles we're working on. We're looking at farming sustainability and beneficial invertebrates in farming systems. And there are so many of them and we know so little about many of them. Um, we're also working with policymakers with Welsh Government, Natural England, to make sure that our research actually makes it 
into policy and then working with with farmers horse owners and and school children as well so it's, it's a busy life <laughs> so what, what, what are your results that do get implemented by 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 the government and by the farmers what kind of results are being used at the moment or will in the future sure so i do quite a lot of stands at events for farmers to come to where we we talk to them about what wormers they're using for example what chemicals they're they're giving to their cattle to control their internal parasites and it's amazing it's kind of instant gratification by the time i finish speaking to them they'll say right i didn't know that i won't use chemicals x y and z again and you know that you've made a massive difference to wildlife there and then and then developing that further into agri-environment policy through Welsh Government as well and I think that's key as well. Now another aspect of Dr Bainan's bug farm is dung beetles direct so so what is this? This is the business side of it. Yeah I suppose so so it I, I hate talking from a business or a money perspective but at the end of the day you have to have money to do what you want to do so dung beetles direct is a business that I've started up to breed British native dung beetles to sell to farmers and horse owners to actually repopulate the British countryside. So it's yes, it's selling beetles, but we're also the main most important part of it is providing the information and the advice that go with those beetles. I mean, there's no point a farmer buying a package of dung beetles from us, releasing them, and then the next day treating all his cattle with an ivermectin, which is one of the, the chemicals that can, can kill the dung beetles. Um, so it's the information that goes with that that's key. And what we really want to do is just to supplement local populations and build them up to where they should be. Um, obviously, this is fairly controversial, so releasing species can, can cause questions. So we're making sure that we do all our research first, and we're working with geneticists to make sure that we're not diluting the genetic diversity of British dung beetles. So we're being very careful with which species we're working with to start with. We're doing a lot of experiments, a lot of trials, before this becomes commercially available. So it's an exciting time for us at the moment. So selling these dung beetles to the farmers is more of a, an investment because they'll release them into their fields, you'll get these important services that they provide, and so it can, in fact, save them money over time. And that's what we've got to prove to them. Um, but I've already got a long waiting list of farmers, right through from farmers who have one goat to 900 cow intensive dairy farmers, as well as horse owners. So it's really promising that even before we've done an economic analysis of how much money that package of dung beetles would save them on the farm, they are still willing to put money out to pay for them. And as I say, I think that's, that gives me a lot of hope for the future of, of, the, you know, of how farming goes in the future. And what are the exciting questions that you hope to answer in the future? Oh, interesting. I think, oh gosh, exciting questions. Mainly, I suppose, a huge one is how we can farm more sustainably. I mean, it's a huge question, isn't it? I want to know how to feed the world sustainably without screwing the planet up. Simple, simple. Simple, easy. <laughs> um, but to that end, actually, we are, we are looking at, as I mentioned before, having a restaurant on site where we are actually eating insects. And that's something that I'm really passionate about. Is So, basically... The way I see it is that it's absolutely crazy that we're grazing livestock, cattle, sheep, for example, on improved, highly nutrient-rich pasture where we could grow crops. I think we should, use, we should use grazing livestock for habitat management, management of heaths, of um, aftermath grazing of wildflower meadows, of wetlands, and then that byproduct should be a meat product that we eat. It should be more expensive and we should value it more and we should eat it much, much less frequently. And I think, therefore, there is a value to actually farming insects for animal-based protein in a much more sustainable way than conventional livestock. You've obviously been on Spring Watch and you've been on Country File talking about dung beetles, how to find them, what they do, how they're so important for us. But you've also got an exciting TV show lined up for the near future, haven't you? Could you tell us a bit more about <laughs> Cloud Lab? Cloud Lab was absolutely wonderful. Now, this, this just shows you that studying dung beetles can, can lead to the most unbelievable adventures. Last year, I actually flew across America in an airship as part of Cloud Lab Exploration of the Skies. And this is a BB, uh, BBC Two documentary where a team of scientists went up in an airship and flew across America. And I was luckily, well, lucky enough to be the biologist on board. So we put an insect net out the back of the airship and we captured insects migrating at height so high altitude insects especially pest insects and see we were looking at what we could learn from those insects we captured in terms of pest dynamics uh, and then also I was looking at, at migration so we looked at not only insect migration but bird migration um, 
across the Gulf of Mexico as well, and then ended ended up paragliding with a Harris Hawk, which was an experience and a half. So it's it, yeah, it just shows that studying the little things can take you a long way. Now the next generation of entomologists hoping to get into research, or just hoping to pick up keeping insects as a hobby and going out bug hunting, why would you say to them that insects are the most fascinating group to work on or to to go out and hunt? Because they're 80% of all animals. I mean, there is so much about insects we don't know. They're fascinating, the diverse range of life cycles. I mean, right through from something laying its egg into another insect and it eats, you know, it hatches into a larvae and eats it from the inside out. I mean, they're just, they're alien stories that it's like delving into another world and you know we feel we know this world really well we know nothing really about the insects so you're going to go out there you're likely to, to discover species new to science that people have never seen before you can discover behaviors that no one's ever seen before and you can answer some really fundamental questions about the impact that we as humans are having on the planet and i don't think there's any other group of animals out there that you can do this with and in fact there's no other you know there's there's no other kind of discipline out there no other job that you can do that there is the potential for so much adventure and discovery. So if you want an adventure and you want a great life, go and study insects. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for talking to us today. We all know why dung beetles are so important to us now and look out for Cloud Lab on BBC Two coming out shortly. So thank you very much. That's a pleasure.